This sound file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article on measures for justice, recorded by user Nosebag Bear. The material recorded is current as of the 30th of August 2019. Measures for Justice from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Measures for Justice is a United States 501c3 non-profit organization designed to gather data from every county in the USA on the criminal justice system and to run that data through a series of standardized performance metrics. Their aim is to foster more data-driven decision-making based on the performance and differences among counties. Measures for Justice has quickly gathered data for six states and is currently acquiring them for 14 more. The data are publicly accessible on a user-friendly web portal. An image of the organization's logo is included. The contents of this article include six sections as follows. Section 1, Purpose. Section 2, History. Section 3, Methodology, including data acquisition, data analysis and presentation of data. Section 4, Key Discoveries and Changes. Section 5, Controversies. Section 6, References. The article also includes an info box containing summary information, which will not be included here. Section 1, Purpose. Measures for Justice, or MFJ, has a primary goal to provide a US-wide open database on all counties, of which there are roughly 3,100, justice systems and processes. By standardising the same core metrics across all counties, it seeks to enable a like-for-like -like comparison of data that are frequently difficult to access and compare. By determining both negative, positive and anomalous trends in system performance, MFJ aims to allow various groups in the justice system – district attorneys, public defenders, judges, legislators, etc. – to make more informed solutions. Section 2 – History In 2010, Amy Bach published her book Ordinary Injustice – How America Holds Court, highlighting both systematic problems in the pursuit of justice and the dearth of information about how the system operates, with a lack of awareness both outside and within the systems. In 2011, MFJ was founded as a non-profit by Bach, with a seed stage grant from Echo and Green, and MFJ researched and drafted the initial standardised metrics to be used. In 2013, the Department of Justice funded a pilot study in Milwaukee County, Wisconsin. After initial verification that the process worked, the pilot remit was expanded to cover all 72 counties in Wisconsin. 2015 was the primary growth year, with a $3 million grant from the Pershing Square Foundation allowing immediate expansion into five other states – Washington, Utah, Pennsylvania, North Carolina and Florida – with roughly 370 counties data gathered. The initial alpha prototype of the visualisation software was created, and door-to-door -door verification of key, otherwise unobtainable data was begun. The 20 States by 2020 campaign was commenced in 2016 primarily funded by Google, providing $1.5 million, and the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, providing roughly $6.5 million, with coverage spread to an additional 14 states. Section 3, Methodology, Data Acquisition and Impact. The organization's data acquisition process begins with collecting data from US statewide court datasets. Often, these populate the majority of the measures. MFJ may also approach local agencies, prosecutors' offices, sheriff's offices, public defenders' offices, etc., to acquire supplemental data. This is done in writing or in person via pairs of MFJ researchers who travel the state county by county. After meeting with Measures for Justice to talk about criminal justice data, in 2018, Florida lawmakers passed laws requiring its jails, prosecutors, public defenders, courts and prisons to coordinate their data collection enabling lawmakers and the public to track how someone moves through the entire criminal justice system from arrest to release. In 2019, Connecticut passed a law requiring standardised recording of prosecutorial data. An image of the United States is included indicating which states have had data gathered, which will have it gathered by 2020, and which are not currently in progress. Data Analysis in order to help align data using different titles for the same concepts or different definitions for the same words, automated character tracking is used on the various datasets to enable harmonizing. This, coupled with more conventional deep dives, allows equivalent data to be extracted. This is then mapped against census data to provide contextual analysis. Comparative analysis is undertaken both intrastate, 
to provide information on how a county is doing compared to its counterparts, and interstate to allow a more countrywide analysis. Each data sample is designed for filtering to allow a finer grain analysis to provide the consideration of in what circumstances does County X do well or poorly. Presentation of data. Data is presented in a user navigable data portal allowing selections of both criteria, geographical spread and appearance to allow customizable consideration. The metrics can either be considered in bar grower format or in map form, both statewide or nationwide, to allow better geographical comparison. The data can also be filtered using various demographics and the base figures also downloaded, along with explanations for why each metric chosen is important. Section 4. Key Discoveries and Changes Bail granting. Individuals unable to make low bail were being kept in jail on weekends and holidays in Winnebago County, as the prosecutor was needed for a probable cause session with a judge, and prosecutors were only present on weekdays. Once at that session, the bail was usually being totally waived by the judge. County officials used the data to realise that scrapping the need for the prosecutor at a session would lead to savings with no actual change in the ultimate bail results, enabling shorter stays in jail and thus lower costs for the county and lower negatives for the accused. MFJ found that the absence of clear-cut data was leading to the scarce data that was available being interpreted in different ways, such as during California's consideration of whether to scrap cash bail. Reform and opposition groups clashed the apparent cost for its abolition, and significant numbers of reformers dropped their support for the scheme due to fears it would actually increase the numbers in prison. A prosecutor in Wisconsin identified the white defendants were being moved into drug rehabilitation diversion programs 1.8 times as frequently as non-white defendants. This has been identified before, but by use of the gathered data, he was able to identify that all defendants were equally likely to be offered the program. The difference was being caused in a lower take-up rate. This allows effort to be targeted at pushing the benefits of the schemes to defendants, rather than at judges and lawyers for racial discrimination. On a more positive note, it was able to confirm to certain counties that efforts to reduce racial disparity in charge-no-charge no decisions were succeeding, particularly with comparison to statewide performance. Section 5. Controversies While the MFJ's goals have generally been agreed with, there have been a couple of primary issues, either with MFJ's implementation or with how the data can come into being. In Florida, there were initially issues with compliance costs for handling the new reporting requirements. A significant initial outlay of costs and time is required for compliance, distracting resources from other goals. In the 2019 legislative session, Florida lawmakers passed an amendment that appropriated an additional $5.7 million for the Criminal Justice Transparency Initiative. Some, including MFJ advocates, have argued that MFJ's data dives can't provide a full picture because they don't seek out any data on either police behaviour or on what happens before the initial arrest of an individual. Section 6. References. 12 references are included here. It is important to verify content included within a Wikipedia article, either through use of included references or by cross-checking content yourself by alternate means. We now come to the end of the spoken article Measures for Justice. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org.